Hey gang, welcome back. This video is going to be Jade Part 26. It's been over a year since I've done anything to this car after installing both quarter panels and the tail panel and some drop-offs and various things that I've done at the car. So if you're interested, go back and check out those other videos. And there's been a ton of work done to this car. So I've put in floor pans, torque boxes, all new suspension, converted it to disc brakes and power steering and all that stuff. So plenty of videos on this car. Go back and check those out. In this video, I need to address something a little bit different. I've had several people ask me about working on or installing a patch panel on a front fender. And this car, even though I've replaced the quarter panels, I am saving the original doors and they did need some patches down in the lower corner right there. So that wasn't too hard to do. And other than this car actually having a bullet hole in that door, the rest of the door was pretty nice. The front fender is an original fender. And for the most part, again, this fender is very solid and worth working on or saving, in my opinion. Now, if you go back and look at the other videos, you'll see there was a lot of body filler in this car. You know, it's hiding a lot of issues. And that's not uncommon. You know, that's just the way it is. But this fender has a really ugly, ugly patch. And I'm not sure exactly what was going on here. And I'll show you more of this, but this, this just won't do. And it even affects the uh, transition gap here to the door. And I need to fix that. So today, I'm going to take this fender apart, or cut it apart, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Now, as I said, this appears to be an original fender, but whoever did these modifications really kind of took some shortcuts. As you can see, there's a gap between this patch panel. Obviously, spot welds kind of holding it together, kind of just folded over, you know. And, and this tells me this was a homemade or handmade piece. You can also see. Now, just, I mean, it's not even a straight line. And, of course, this had, I don't know how much filler on it, but you can compare that, you know, to the what should be the, a flat transition. And, obviously, it's not. So, I'm going to cut this apart and see if I can't save what's left of this fender.
All right, so as you can see here, there was probably, I would say, definitely some sort of rust. And you can still, you know, see it on the inside of this support brace. And this was more than likely just a flat piece of sheet metal that they kind of hand formed and tack welded it on there. And, you know, at the time, that's probably all they had. You know, they didn't have the avail availability of all the stamped panels or, you know, replacement parts that we have today. So, you know, it was pretty good effort. Um, you know, it was definitely could have been improvements on the shape and that sort of thing. But for the time, it is what it is. All right, so what am I going to do to fix this? Well, I bought this panel uh, actually a couple years ago with a bunch of other stuff that I bought for Jade. And it's not been unwrapped. It's just been sitting in a box inside. And you can see it's got this surface. And that's really, it's minor, you know, but it's just the way it is. This company is Spectra Premium. I'm not a big fan of Spectra parts, and I've said this before. They do, you know, a basic shape. Like this one doesn't even have the hole where you would mount the forward bolt. Um, it's cut with a plasma cutter. The flange here is just, you know, it's just, it would have been nice had this been at least partially rolled over instead of just bent at a 90. Um, it does have a recess angle here, or a, you know, a flange where you could slip it up under your original panel, which that's, that's nice, you know, that, that helps. But otherwise, you know, it's, it's a starting point. And basically, you know, this panel, um, patch panel, lower front fender, it was $36.95 when I bought it. I don't know if they're still selling it. Uh, the part number is M204LH, and that's obviously going to be, you know, left hand. So, just know that going in, they're not the, not the, not the cream of the crop as far as repair panels. But when you have nothing else, it at least gives you something to work with. So I want to just kind of do. A comparison fitment. So if I use this fender and roughly hang it over a little bit, you know, if I were to overlap this, it's it's not too bad. Um, the transition's not going to be as great as you know an original fender, but it, like I said, it gives you a starting point. Now, I don't know if I want to use this whole thing or not. I haven't decided yet. Then I may. I'm just trying to kind of get a feel for it and what, what I like or don't like. I'm going to flip it over and look at it from the other side. Well, this might not be too bad. It is sitting a little high, but that's to be expected because if it's stamped to the original dimensions, it's not going to overlap. If it was oversized, it would drop right down. And, you know, then you would have a, a, a bigger panel. But this may be fairly accurate to the dimensions I need. Now, again, I'm not committed to uh, doing an overlap. I, I'm not sure just yet. I'm going to probably look at this a little bit harder. I may have to adjust some of the inner structure here you know, get it out of the way so that it can sit down a little bit. And of course I need to clean up a little bit of the other side just because. I want to know, I want to see what angle I need to go with to make this work. Before I go too much further, I just want to show you a couple details that are helping me decide that I'm probably going to use the whole panel and if I do so, I may do the overlap, and if I do, I'm going to have to modify it back here because of the inner structure. Because you're not going to be able to force that flange in between the skin and this inner structure. Also, 
up here at the top uh, or the bottom this is to be welded together and I'll show you on this um, opposite fender on the passenger side here you can see that it would have been welded right here and of course probably welded here in the bottom somewhere and that just helps give it that st structure and strength that it needs so with that reference point that's going to help me get this to fit better because you know once everything's in place and I'll, I'll put a clamp here just to help me with the, the layout um, but for now I'm going to draw some lines and use the you know that my line will be right on this edge and then what I'll do is I'll measure up whatever number I come up with and maybe an inch it's close to an inch maybe seven eighths um, I may even go a little over an inch and cut and work my way down I don't ever want to try to go straight to a final cut because if you you overcut it's too late you're done so I'd rather cut short and work my way back to it as you can see I have it clamped right here so I'm going to just use a silver sharpie and draw that line So I'll use some inch and a quarter tape. And I'm going to cut below that line. Now back here, there's probably a couple of spot welds, so I'll have to grind those off and get this little piece off. It's not going to take much though, I can already see it separating, it's got a gap under it, but just like I said, probably a little spot weld and I'll get that off. Alright, one other thing I want to point out, if you look at my stand, you can kind of see, I guess, maybe I can adjust that. If you look at my stand there, I have the uh, fender supported by some blocks of wood. And the reason for that is I want it in the most relaxed state that I can get it. I don't want to have it in, in a bind, you know, kind of twisted. So hopefully this takes some of the load off of it and allows it just to kind of be relaxed. Now, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm using a different tripod today. Um, what I want to do is place this patch panel in, up on the fender and again it fits pretty well but like I was saying earlier this corner right here I'm gonna have to trim this because like I said there's a, a flange there there's no way you're gonna wedge that up under there and make it look right so I need to get a measurement from the edge of the fender here back at least as far if not a little bit further than where this piece is. I'll draw a line on the patch panel and cut that off completely. I don't want it. Um, I'll try to save, you know, try to line up my roll flange as best I can with where it's going to butt into this piece. Now, 
I also want to point out, I'm not done trimming. This is just my first rough cut. I wanted to get rid of the mass, and now I can work in a smaller scale and cut this up because, again, the, the flange here is, you know, it's going to be um, it's about an inch. So I may end up trimming off, you know, a quarter, something like that. And I even may trim it a few times just to get it to where I like it and it rolls into this little uh, edge right here uh, better. In this case, I'm working right at one inch that I'm going to cut off of this corner up here. All right, so I cut just above that little roll or little, you know, flange area, and I want to leave that. So what I did is I'll place the patch panel back onto the fender, and I drew a line. And that's going to give me my, my pretty much where I want to cut and eliminate this section. Just so happens to work out that that gap is roughly the same as my three quarter inch tape. So now, I'll cut that again. Okay, so there you can see my notch that I made in that corner. I also trimmed off a little bit of the front edge of this flange because I like the consistency of the forward section here. So I left a little bit sticking out that I could use as a reference point. The uh, other part I had to modify was this top edge right here. I had to cut a little bit of that off because of the way the fender rolls back up and it was just kind of in the way a little bit. So let me just show you how this fits in here. I'm going to put that corner first. And that's pretty close. I'll get some clamps on this and uh, we'll have another look at it. Well, I think that fits surprisingly well. I will have some things I have to work on just a little bit, but if you look at the line and the contour, it's pretty accurate. It even fits very well up here where I clamped it, and the secondary contact point is really close, so it's not going to take much. Just a little clamp on that, and that'll take care of it. The only thing I really have to work on is I'll have to move it halved a little bit so that I have a starting point to where I'm going to roll this flange and it's a little bit you know too far forward right now so I'll bring that back and match that up but otherwise it's really pretty decent I mean I'll have a I'll have to fill in a little bit here in this corner but that's minor and I think even with, with this moving aft you know just a little bit it's not going to affect the front edge very much, but I'll move it around and we'll see what it looks like. So there I moved it back just a little bit, and it really isn't going to make that big a difference up here, I don't think. I still have to angle this flange just a little bit, and of course I'll have to weld in a little, a little piece right here where I cut a little bit too much off. But for the most part, it is what it is, and I'm going to have to be happy with it. The alternative is, you know, you go buy another fender, and then you fight with that fender to try to make it fit the car. And I, I feel like I'll be further ahead with doing this patch. So now I'm going to clean things up, get this undercoating off of the inside here. And, of course, I will treat the backside of this inner structure, make sure it's all cleaned up and not going to rust on me. I'll put some uh, uh, rust converter back there and get it welded in. 
So I cleaned this up, got rid of the big scaly rust, and I'm using, I know it's hard to read this, this is from Purple Power. This is a de-ruster metal conditioner, and I've used it in the past. Have a good, I've had good luck with it, and you know, you basically just brush it on and let it do its thing. Now before I actually install this, I want to show you something else that I plan to do. Being that this is on a curve, and you need to roll this flange in, it's really going to be difficult to make it look correct or make it look right whenever you're kind of forcing that metal to fight against that curve. So all these black lines, I'm going to make cuts. And that's a relief cut so that when I start rolling it over, it's not going to fight each one of those, uh, you know, this length of this curve. Because it's just, it's almost impossible to make that do the same thing that, that they did at the factory with, you know, giant presses. So, just, just a point of reference in case you're looking to try to do this. So, as I said, you know, I treated it with purple power, let it all dry, and then I applied primer on top of that. And around the perimeter where I'm going to do any kind of welding, I'm using 3M weld through primer. So I've treated the inside, the back edge up here, the outside, and of course I went on the inside and the back side of the brace. Now the brace, when I roll the flange around, I will just tack that on the back side. There won't be any welding out here, but I just wanted to put that as a uh, primer on the whole surface. I also have something else to show you once I get all this in place to, tr to uh, take care of the rust uh, the surface rust that's on the outside of the panel and you're going to be amazed whenever I show you that. Now as I said before this is in a relaxed state so I've got two clamps down here on the bottom one up here at the top section and one forward where it meets the wheel arch. So I'm going to slowly tack weld this in uh, because I had my lines and I had my original line, um, I'm able to use what would be the joggle of the flange and verify that I'm straight with that pattern as well. So what I'll do is I'll start here in the back and I'll just kind of do little tacks and work my way forward. I can, feel, I can feel a little bit of separation. So I may add another clamp. Now, the key here is I don't want to go fast. Slow is good because you don't develop heat and you want to let these cool down in between weld cycles. So even though it's, it's, it feels like you want to just kind of zip along, if you do that you end up with dips where the metal will warp. So I'm going to just do a little tacks again and follow the pattern go in between those.
and now I'm just going to let it cool. Now here's the thing, again, for me to know whether this is cool enough, I should be able to put my hand on there and not have any problem keeping it there. That's the way I do it, so use that as a reference if you like. Now, if you want to be more cautious, don't go you know that fast in between. You can kind of go every third one, something like that. But now what I want to do is I just want to see how well it's doing, and I want to clean up some of these welds because I just don't want to pile it on and not be able to see where my gaps are. So I'm just going to use a little 90 grinder and knock them down. Just to show you, each little weld will be part of a full weld when it's all overlapped and completed. So I'm going to keep on welding this. I'm not going to video the whole thing. It's just not worth it. And then I'll come back and show you some other stuff. Alright, so I finished welding and grinding the seam. I think it turned out pretty nice. and the shape of the fender maintained so no distortion now you will feel a little bit of a transition here because of that joggle so just know that going in there will be filler over this to smooth this out and now what I want to do is turn it over and weld the back side of the brace on and I may work on the seam right here joining those two together it'll be easier once I flip it up and then I'll work on rolling this edge back around. As you can see, I don't know if I showed this earlier, I applied paint and, or primer and paint on the back side of the panel. And I knew some of that would burn off up here at the top, which it did, and that's fine. But I got in a little bit of a hurry or ahead of myself, and I guess I sprayed you know, the paint down here where the uh, weld will be. But the thing is, I apply some heat, that'll burn off, and it won't really be a big issue. Um, it'll get primer and paint later anyway. Now for this step, I don't want to just roll this thing over as hard and as fast as I can. I want to try to keep this edge. Now, unfortunately, like I said, this edge on the original crease or overlap is pretty crisp. And this one's just not going to be as good. It'll be close, but it won't be as good as the original. So I'm going to use this little body hammer and probably use this, you can call it a slap dolly to get started because it's got a pretty blunt little edge here and also this is a uh, body hammer used for like doing door skins so it has a nice narrow head to it same way here so that may come in handy and also a basic block flat on one side it's got a bit of a curve on the other side and of course um, you know the curved surface here, flat edge. So what I want to do is start by this upper section here. 
And I'm going to try to just give it a little bit of a backing with the, the uh, slap dolly, just, just to try to make that edge a little bit harder. This is where it comes in handy, like I said, with uh, cutting the slots. I can do a little bit at a time rather than trying to force it over. probably about as far as I can go with that dolly. So now I'm going to use this other one just as a, uh, a backing, just something to hit against. Now this is where this little uh, door skin hammer comes in, comes in very handy because I can strike without catching this inner uh, part of the fender. I wish there was an easier way to film this, but as you can see, I've got it standing up on the top of the fender, it's facing down. So now I'm going to use this curved part and just kind of follow it and compress this outer edge just a little bit more and try to make it a little bit crisper. This is where this curve comes in handy. Now as you can see, I did, I'm not in a hurry. I want to make sure that I'm striking properly. I'm not creating more damage or beating things up on the outside. And continuing to follow the, the original curve, I think it's pretty close. And now that I have the flange the way I want it, I'm going to weld each one of those slots. And of course I'll put vice grips on as I go to keep it tight.
Now one more thing I want to do here is try to replicate the shape that this uh, arch has somewhat. And if you can see it, I don't know, but it's kind of flat and it comes up and then tapers back into the fender a little bit. And that's kind of hard to replicate. And I wish I could offer you a you know simple way to do this, but I have this what we call a bucking bar in the aircraft industry. And um, I've had this for a long time. <laughs> and it's very heavy. And it's going to do what I need it to do for this. It gives me this, I can reach in behind that flange. I can kind of copy where that line is. And then I can roll this back using this. It's a lot closer than it was, I'll say that. <laughs> I think that's going to work just fine. It gets really close to the original shape. And what I'll do is I'll finish welding this little, little bit left right here. And then if need be, I can trim this. I can take a sanding disc and try to get this exact same width, but it's pretty close. Well, I blended down those welds, like I said, and I did the, a little bit on the transition right here. So it's a little cleaner. And this is still going to take filler. Don't, don't ever think you're just going to put this on and be done because this corner is a lot crisper than this one. This one's kind of round. And unfortunately, that's what you have to deal with. But it may end up taking some filler to build that shape a little bit. But that's just the way it is. The only thing left to do now is I have to drill a hole here for where I think there's a uh, strut bracket that attaches and also open up this area where the bolt goes so that I can get the bolt in. Now one more thing I want to do before I go any further and I have more to, more to say but I want to put this back on the car. I don't know if I showed a video in the beginning, I don't remember now if I showed how, the, how it fit with that haphazard patch but we're going to see how this fits now that it's all together. I'm just showing this. I don't obviously have the bolt in the bottom, but if I just flex that just a little bit, that gap is going to turn out really nice. See if I can't pan this up and show you. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's going to be the end of this video. I know I talked earlier in the video about treating the rust that was on that patch panel, and I still plan to do that. So I think what I'll do is a part two to this video. There's a lot of information I've already shared, and there's more that needs to be shared. So I will do a second part to this. I will also probably spray some epoxy primer, and I have to cut out those little cutouts for the bolts, or access for the bolts in the bottom. And probably put some sort of treatment on the inside to where the flange overlaps on the internal part of the patch. So that, that can be addressed in a second video and I think that's what I'll do. If you're not already subscribed, I ask that you hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up on there if you like the video, share, leave a comment, that'll be helpful as well. And I'll try to keep producing more of these videos. It takes a lot of effort not only to make the video, but to also do all the editing and that sort of thing, but I feel like it's worth it to get this information out, and if, I'm, if it's going to be shared, I'd like it to be shared again and again so that others can see it and learn as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you again for subscribing. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, take care of yourselves.
Hey gang, welcome back. This will be Brooklyn Pony. Oh, no, it won't. No, it won't. Um, yeah. That's normal because 